Did you ever stop to think that the cigarettes you're smoking might actually be counterfeits that you're funding criminals? Or that the coins you use might be fake too? All of which has a negative impact on Europe's finances, to which every working European citizen contributes. The fraud can seep in anywhere where the euro is in circulation, whether it's the diversion of money meant for infrastructure projects, for agriculture, or for other European programmes. A European body was set up in 1999 to recover the funds that have disappeared from the European budget. It's called OLAF, the European Anti-Fraud Office. OLAF is part of the European Commission, but it has an independent status to conduct investigations entirely freely. This operational independence is still subject to a monitoring committee appointed by common agreement by the European Parliament, the European Council and the Commission. OLAF must also present to MEPs an annual report on its activities, which will be debated in Parliament. OLAF therefore ensures that European taxpayers' money is used in accordance with its original purpose. Around 400 people work for OLAF, half of whom are investigators. They all have investigative experience in their countries, in customs, in criminal investigations, or their former prosecutors and lawyers. This is the case of the Director General of OLAF. They've been uh, for more than 15 years uh, a public prosecutor in Italy. I dealt with economic crimes, corruption crimes, mafia crimes in, in some in different cities in Italy. But to open an investigation, OLAF must first receive an allegation, either from European citizens or from European institutions. In 2014, for example, OLAF received more than 1,400 such allegations. Almost 40% of these concern structural funds. These are the European funds dedicated to regional policy, which aims to reduce the development gap between Europe's richer and poorer countries. OLAF then concerns itself with centralised spending, foreign aid, agricultural funds, customs, the marketplace and, to a lesser extent, tobacco and counterfeit items. We are mainly an investigative body, so we investigate, we try to find out how things are, have happened, what has happened, if there is a fraud or a crime or, or, or nothing. And then we recommend the uh, actions. That is, we are not a sanctioning body. The sanctions, like disciplinary, financial or judicial, are taken by the competent authority through their own uh, procedures. In 2014, OLAS recommendations aim to recover 900 million euros. That's just over half a percent of the EU's total budget for that year. Smugglers are becoming increasingly inventive. This roll of paper is stuffed full of smuggled cigarettes. One ship's container can hold about 10 million cigarettes hidden in rolls like this. And that represents, in terms of lost revenue from tax and import duty, around 2.5 million euros. But do Europe's authorities follow the advice of OLAF? Mostly, not always. There is an autonomy of these bodies to take measures. When it comes to the judicial authorities, which are you know, independent, and there are hundreds of them in, in Europe, uh, the results are quite varied over the years and depending also on the countries and on the cases. Whilst when it comes to the EU institutions, there is more consistency and uh, more uh, often uh, our recommendations are followed. In addition to investigations of fraud, corruption and any illegal activity related to EU funds, OLAF is also responsible for detecting serious offences committed by personnel of the European Union, be they officials, politicians elected as MEPs or commissioners. And finally, OLAF obviously contributes to the development of Europe's anti-fraud policy. Thank you.